Here at Treehouse, one of our missions is to get our students into jobs. Learning to code, while a big part of this challenge, isn't all of it. Today, we're going to be talking to Rachel Parsons. Rachel is currently a consultant iOS developer, but has held many positions in different companies and a range of skill sets. So I thought we could ask her what it means to be job ready. Let's take a look. So Rachel, thank you for taking the time to do this with us today. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for uh, having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, to start, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've uh, been developing apps uh, and on various platforms, primarily web, uh, since the mid-90s. I got into web development then and really found my passion for programming. Um, mainly on the front end. I, I dabbled a bit in the back end uh, in college and you know, throughout my career. So, um, you know, I've really found that my special, specialization comes on front end development with an emphasis on either web and more recently mobile. Uh, so okay. not so much desktop, but I've written in just about every language you can think of, .NET, Java, <laughs> C, writing iOS apps now, I've done Android. All the so what, what kind of made you jump around rather than, you know, do you have a favorite language or do you just like kind of exploring different areas? Of yeah, I like, I like being diverse and I like learning a lot. Um, I have a tendency to get bored with the same project and the same problems and the same solutions. So I found that uh, what has kept me most diverse is trying to be innovative with the technologies I have available and finding new solutions for old problems or finding new um, innovative ways to apply old technology to new problems. Uh, gotcha. So, so the, you know, when I was kind of looking you up, I, I, I'd noticed that you had done, you know, a lot of different things in different languages, big companies, small companies, consulting. And so the, the theme for, you know, today's discussion is uh, being job ready. So we have a lot of students here at Treehouse who go through our curriculum and learn to code, you know, whether it's for iOS, Android, and you can speak to all these areas. Um, but, you know, then they kind of look to what's the next, look at what the next step is. Um, and, you know, you've, you've been in the industry a while and you've, you know, been in a bunch of different roles. So I wanted to talk to you about what you think being job ready means. Being job ready, oh man, that's a that's a tough one because it encompasses so much. You know, I, I think one of the keys to being job ready in the technical world is be ready to learn and be ready to focus. So, despite the fact that I've had a pretty diverse um, technology experience or skill set, I have always focused at least some of my energy, some amount of time. Uh, to a technology. So it's really rare that I'm doing .NET and Java at the same time. You know, I spent probably five years doing .NET and web development specifically. So taking, you know, being prepared to devote two to three years to a technology at least, if not longer, uh, is really important. And then being ready to learn, you really have to be a fast learner if you're going to be in technology these days, because it does move fast. Uh, the JavaScript framework you use today is not the one you will use in six months. Uh, and part of that is just the, the changing landscape of, of mobile, of desktop, and, and uh, just the many different directions that you can go. So to be job ready, I think those two things are really important, and that will help guide you on the path that you are meant to, to travel. So, so you know, you, so you mentioned that for for the technical side. So, what mm -hmm. about you know? Do you how important do you think are soft skills? And um, you know, are they necessary? Uh, things like you know, networking and you know some of the cliched ones. Um, yeah. But you know, just you know, being able to work with teams and how important are those things? And how can someone who who doesn't go to a traditional school who uses something like Treehouse? How can they you know shore up those skills? Um, to kind of prove that they're ready to enter the workforce. Yeah, sure. So soft skills are paramount, um, especially in the absence of extensive experience or in-depth technical skills. That can actually put an employer over the edge as far as, yes, I'm going to hire that person because anybody can learn technical skills, as you guys are fully aware. Anybody can 
pick up a book or, or sign up for a uh, tutorial and, and learn Java or learn Objective-C. But what it comes down to really is being able to interact with people. Um, you have to be able to talk to customers. You have to be able to hold a conversation to present uh, good ideas, to present bad ideas to clients. And in software development, everybody is your client, whether you're full-time or consultant. Everybody's a customer. So you're constantly playing a, somewhat of a sales role um, whenever you're trying to push a feature or encourage a user to go a certain direction with an implementation or architecture decision. So those communication skills are paramount. Presentation skills are really important. Um, and then enthusiasm. I, I think I've gotten at least one or two jobs based on my enthusiasm alone because that goes a long way from the home drum, you know, here I am doing some software development. That's no fun. You know, we all want to have at least a little bit of fun and energy at work. And so finding something that you're passionate about and bringing that passion to your work, going, that, could take so, that could take you so much further. Now, can you talk about how, um, you know, do you know of any ways people can improve and um, can gain these skills? How can you learn these skills? So the best way that somebody can, can pick up these skills is practice. Uh, get in front of people, get out in the community, join the user groups, um, start networking with people, and figure out who your peers are and participate. Um, you know, my company just put on a hackathon and a lot of people were a little nervous, you know, what's that going to mean? What is that, uh, you know, what's a hackathon? <laughs> and what it really, what we're trying to encourage people to do is come out and try things, come out and practice, maybe play with a technology that you're not familiar with or interface with some people on a team that you're not familiar with, that you don't work with on a daily basis. Because getting that different perspective, and I see this um, just by going out into user groups and communities, getting that other perspective can shed a lot of light on a problem you're working through or a skill you're trying to practice. And really the only way to prepare yourself is to practice. Just get out there and it, you know, throw yourself out there. Put yourself in an uncomfortable position and see what happens. Now, does that relate to the same in the same way to learning technical skills? So say you were to hire someone who just taught themselves how to code, you know, what what kind of things are you looking for technically? I am looking for technical acumen, not so much specifically with a language, but more an underlying understanding, uh, conceptual knowledge. So study what you already know, and then study maybe some things that you don't know. And that, you know, I think in, in technology we get so focused on a language or a platform, and we forget sometimes about all the other things that play into it. In fact, today I was just trying to solve a math problem doing algebra, you know, all those skills that you learn in, in college, you might not get from a non-traditional um, education track, but you can supplement that. You can go out and seek those things out on your own. Read a philosophy book, read a math book or blog post or whatever. That is an investment in yourself. And I think that's another angle of uh, preparation that you can do on your own that will, will help build that. Now, you know, I've noticed, you know, like I mentioned earlier, that you, you've learned a lot of languages, you've kind of done a lot of different things. How did you learn? Did you teach yourself? You know, what can you kind of explain that process? Majority of my uh, technical skill has been self-taught. Uh, I learned Java in college because they taught it. I learned C and C++ a little bit. And um, so, you know, I learned a little bit of the technology in college, but really so much of it is self-taught. And you have, to, you have to be able to learn that way if you're going to be technical. Um, it's just the way that, that the frameworks and the, the platforms go. It's, you know, what we were developing 10 years ago, we're not really writing that code anymore. You know, and even going from, for instance, right now I'm, I'm writing iOS apps, even going from iOS 5 to an iOS 7 app, is a, it's a pretty big leap to, to try to make that, that connection and to get ramped up on the frameworks and the APIs and, and all the things that change throughout. So, again, you know, I, it really goes back to 
be able to learn quickly. I think that's something I've learned. I can learn quickly. I figured out my mechanisms, um, whether it's practice or a class or uh, just throwing myself into it <laughs> at first. What, what, what is that mechanism, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, for me personally, it's getting a book, and I've just recently switched to ebooks because that's uh, that's a huge thing for me um, to go technical ebooks because now I can sit with my Kindle or, or the app, the, the Kindle app up, either one, and actually write code. I, I walk through examples, uh, and that helps me learn really quickly because then I, if I have a real world example, I know exactly what things are going to map to in other languages. I can start relating, okay, this is hello world, this is a label in this language, that, that's just like a label in .NET or in Java or whatever. So learning, I learn by example, just actually doing something. Okay, now let's switch tracks a little bit. Now, what are some of the ways that, you know, you highlight these skills? Well, for, for our students, um, you know, who are just coming into these fields, what, what are different ways that they can highlight their skills, whether, you know, technical or non-technical, uh, that would, say, you know, make you want to hire them? I think it's really important to give specific examples. Uh, giving, being able to give a concrete example of something that you do and you do well is, that's huge, because when, when you're interviewing, uh, you could tell somebody anything, but a skilled interviewer will be able to see through any nebulous or ambiguous words that you use, any, uh, you know, ambiguous stories that you tell or examples that you give. It's pretty clear generally when you've done something and when you haven't. So the more specific an example you can give, even if it's just you being enthusiastic about something, um, that goes, that that's a lot better than just saying, well, I helped out on this app and I helped out on that app. Those kinds of things say, tell me that you didn't really do anything, as opposed to I helped design and implement the Active Directory scanner that pulled out employees and sorted them by name. So specific examples go a long way. Gotcha. Now, um, you know, we talked about um, soft skills what you know what are ways that like you know do you do you recommend kind of like going out to meetups and those kinds of things um, user groups when looking for jobs or you know what what is kind of the best place for someone who's learning to go out and look for their first job uh, it's really important who you know uh, that's really what it comes down to you can talk to technical recruiters all day. You could talk to non-technical recruiters all day. Um, as somebody who has hired people, I am looking for recommendations from people I know. Uh, I'm looking for more of the story of somebody and less about what some recruiter is telling me about this person and how this person may or may not fit. Recruiters, I'm a bit skeptical of. Sorry, recruiters. <laughs> We're all skeptical. Um, <laughs> but uh, ultimately, making those connections, you know, I've recommended people to certain jobs, and, and that's worked out really well. I've been recommended to jobs, and i gotten more jobs through word of mouth than, than anything else or personal recommendations. So, yeah, go to meetups, go to user groups, go to presentations and conferences. I've gotten job offers at some of those places just from talking to people, talking about what you're doing. And, and you know, it's at those places where you'll have those casual conversations about what you're most passionate about and make connections that are a lot more meaningful than searching dice.com or talking to the guy at, at Joe's staffing company down the street. So, so it's as important to put in time away from your computer kind of as much as it is to you know, sit and hack away. Most definitely, uh, unless you're one of the those hacker types that just wants somebody to slide pizza boxes under the door. <laughs> I mean, if you actually want a job out in the real world, you have to get out there. You have to put yourself out there. You have to practice those interpersonal skills because that is 50% of what people are looking for. Uh, unless you just want the, the job writing COBOL for right. a bank, which I, I know a couple guys. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's great to hear because, you know, one of the things we really try and, uh, 
you know, we, we primarily teach how to code, but, you know, as a business teacher here, it's kind of like my, you know, I try to push as much behind those lessons that, yes, you're learning to code, but you also need to kind of go out there, um, do, you know, do as, as much of an effort in getting to know people and get to know your community and those kinds of things. Yeah, definitely. So, again, when, you know, looking through your um, history, kind of, I, you know, I, I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, you did a brief stint, and you mentioned that, did a brief stint as a designer before realizing that you preferred programming? Um, yeah, kind of. Um, not so much designer as I explored the designer aspect of things. I actually went to the Art Institute uh, for multimedia web design. I was doing web development and knew I, I kind of wanted to take that to the next level, but I didn't really know what that meant. So I went to the Art Institute, and when I discovered that I wasn't a very good designer, <laughs> I you know, decided to switch tracks and go something a little bit more technical. I left there and went back to a, a regular university because I'd already finished half of a degree program. So um, for me, it was about trying something different. And I, you know, I don't regret any of that. It was uh, nine months well spent a lot of money, but nine months well spent, uh, just to find out, you know, that something I tried didn't work out. You know, I'll, I have no question now that I'm not a designer. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, you know, sorry, go on. I'm just a little too logical for that side. <laughs> yeah, so that, you know, the, the question I had out of that was, do you, do you recommend that as an approach? Did it, was it, you know, clearly, I guess it was useful for you to figure out what you really wanted to want to do. So do you recommend people trying out different things or just like, you know, bunkering down and going with one, you know, I want to learn how to write iPhone apps, so let me just focus on Objective-C and Xcode for the next like eight months or a year? Yeah, I, I think it's, it should be moderated. So it's, you, you can't keep switching tracks every week. You can't keep, I mean, you can if you want, but it's not very productive. And I don't think it's fair to a technology or a platform or an approach or to yourself uh, to invest so little time that you can't really evaluate it. Um, with, the, with art school, for me, that was nine months. At the end of nine months, I realized uh, this, is, this is not taking me down the road that I want to go. This is, you know, I'm not happy going this direction. Uh, you know, I wasn't happy the other way, but this is really not what I want to do. So I gave it nine months of, of solid effort and uh, investment before I made that change and said, okay, I need to go do something different. And so yeah, I encourage it, but I think you really have to make sure that you give every option its fair opportunity. You know, if you're going to learn mobile, pick one of the technologies, Android, iOS, and do it for, you have to do it for at least six months, in my opinion. Uh, a language uh, or a platform, that kind of thing, needs at least six months uh, of real solid effort for you, because for most people, that's how long it's going to take for you to, to get a full grasp on it. Um, you know, if you're a slower learner, you might need more time. More time. Um, you really just kind of have to figure out what that time frame is for yourself. But for me, it's about six months, and I try to devote a little bit more because I like to to get a little bit more advanced. I like to see what else can I do with this technology and how far can I take it. I'm at two and a half years in iOS development right now and it's it's getting a little bit humdrum. <laughs> but I, you know, as they come out with new stuff and, and I have new ideas, I'm starting to play with some different um, aspects of the framework and doing different things with the technology. So. Cool, well you know, to kind of wrap up, I just wanted to ask you one final question. Um, what advice do you have to people who are just entering the field and, you know, if you had just one piece of advice to give them? Be persistent. Um, be persistent. If you have a passion for this, keep at it. Um, there is a lot of competition for jobs and for the fun projects, but if you're really good at what you do and you keep at it, you will get what you want. Um, so just keep pounding. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Rachel. This is a thank pleasure talking some. to you. If um, you know any of our students want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Twitter is probably the easiest way to find me, and I am out there at Pinky Rage. Cool. That's an interesting name. Yes. That's Pinky in the Brain. <laughs> nice. Well, thank yes. you very much.
All right. Thank you.